It's a sensitive subject, understandably, but I'd like to share some thoughts on suicide. First of all, I don't, I think that we have to be very, very careful when we approach the idea of suicide and that people who are contemplating suicide have to really be sure that what they're facing before them that is causing this idea, that is causing this possibility to come into their consciousness, they have to make sure that it, it really isn't a temporary problem, that it's not something that can be resolved, that they're doomed essentially, <laughs> that the pain isn't going to go away, that um, the disease isn't going to go away, that the, the unbelievably painful trauma isn't going to go away. Now, I'm not saying these things are going to go immediately upon the release of the body, the death of the body. It is entirely possible that your subtle body, which you will be in upon the release of your physical body, may continue to carry on with some of that pain, especially when it comes to disease. When people have really, really catastrophic diseases and stuff, and even addictions and stuff, um, those things can, be, can have to be worked out in the afterlife, in the astral body. Healing can be done on the other side too. And further destruction can be done on the other side, too. It's not like when we end this body, we are ending life. When you end this body, you will find yourself fully conscious in your astral body in an astral dimension. It's anybody's guess what dimension that will be for you, but it will be a compatible dimension with your vibration at the time of your body's death. The vibration of your subtle body at the time of your death will determine what uh, astral dimension you will be eligible to enter into, just like with your dreams. And I have discussed this at length in my video called, but is it your vibration or is vibration everything? But it's a, you can search it on my channel um, just by searching the word vibration. I think it's called, is it all about your vibration? So, <clears throat> I was brought up Catholic, and of course, in, of course, in Christianity, suicide is a mortal sin, which means you have committed murder, and you have, um, you have broken the commandment of thou shalt not kill, and you're going to hell, and you're probably going to burn in hell, I guess, for all of eternity. That is the uh, Christian, from what I understand. I'm not quite sure how they um, detail suicide and how it is regarded, but I do know that it's, you know, for the most part, regarded as a mortal sin. Now that I'm, you know, not a Christian anymore, and I haven't been for decades now, um, and, and I still, as a young woman, even when I wasn't a Christian, um, as a younger woman, I I still was like, I had been conditioned to believe that suicide wasn't an option. And I can remember one of my very first yoga teachers, and he was also a Tai Chi master, um, correcting me when I said something like, in, in conversation that like suicide wasn't an option or something, and I wasn't talking about myself, I was talking about just in general. And he said, suicide is always an option. <laughs> and uh, And he corrected my faulty perception because of course it's always an option nature has given us the option that's one thing that we have to remember nature has given us a fail safe if worse comes to worse and i have experience with this in my past life if worse comes to worse it's there it's an option it's always an option it shouldn't be a easy option it should be a very very well contemplated contemplated option, but it is an option nonetheless. So in my last life as the woman named Ida Craddock, who was a um, free speech activist and sexologist and yogini 
and philosopher and great, great researcher and writer, if I do say so myself, um, committed suicide. I committed suicide in my last body. And that was in the early 1900s when I was facing a second trip to a hard labor camp, to a prison, um, where I was essentially doomed and I wasn't going to do that to this body again. I'd rather just get out of it. So um, that's my experience with suicide. My most recent experience with suicide is that at the age of 46, in my last body, I was forced. I didn't want to. I liked that body. I liked who I was. I liked what I was doing. I loved the work what I, that I was doing. I was doing a ton of work. And all, and all of a sudden, I was forced to get out of the body because of some, you know, laws at the time, the way that the world operated at the time, the puritanical ways of American life at the time forced me to have to leave that body. But I was doomed. I was doomed to the hard labor camp. So that's the way I look at it. If you're doomed... <laughs> and it's an easier way to get out than what you're facing, then it's an option. Maybe your karma is to go ahead and face whatever it is all the way through, and that's an option too. Everything is an option, but we have to really decide karmically and dharmically what is right for us. I believe in, um, you know, the right to die. I believe in assisted suicide. I support, you know, good old Dr. Kevorkian, I think he was doing really, really compassionate, good work. And I support the, the, uh, the groups that do promote and advocate for the right for people to die safely and, you know, humanely. Um, and so to close off, because I don't want to go on and on here, I, I believe in reincarnation, obviously. And... Um, when it comes to reincarnation and people who believe in reincarnation, we often have a very different perception of suicide than Christians and, say, you know, Jewish people and Islamic people. Um, the punishment is not always as harsh. <laughs> you know, when it comes to reincarnation, we've made a choice. Like, we make choices every day. That would be a choice that we make. There would be consequences, just like every other choice that you make in your life has consequences. So I, I don't believe that it's this great mortal sin that's going to cause you to burn in hell, but I do believe it has to be approached with full understanding of what you're doing, what you're losing, um, the possibility of resolution. And, you know, you, if, if the problem can be resolved, you may regret committing the suicide and you may be in your astral body thinking why the heck did I do that I should have stayed in that body I had more things to do so it has to be thought through and rationalized so I mean that's basically it that's pretty much my thoughts on it um, I just think that it's it's something that people don't talk about enough and I wish that they did because I think that, that we all think about it but I think that People don't want to, to admit it, and they don't want to talk about it. They think that there's something wrong with them, or that they have mental issues. And really, they don't. We don't, collectively. If we talked about it more, it would probably be a good thing, right? <laughs> anyway, if you have any comments for me, just leave them in the comment section. Thanks for listening.